How's it going, guys? Difficult question for vascular internal medicine, surgery, family medicine, 2CK. If you're studying for step one, relax. Okay, I'll tell you some high yield points for cardio you need to know, and you also have to ace 2CK eventually. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram threads. I'm an underscore medical, I'm EHLM, an underscore medical links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group channel down below. Now start the clip. During the past month, 65 year old man has six episodes of blindness in his right eye, lasting 10 to 20 minutes. Past medical history, non contributory. He takes no medication. This question just simply wants to know the most appropriate next step in diagnosis. So, these uh, transient episodes of blindness, presumably painless in an eye, are known as amaurosis fugax. And this is essentially a TIA, but of the eye. Okay? And the correct answer is going to be carotid duplex ultrasound or carotid duplex scan, as they can write it. And I say that this is difficult because there is no mention of elevated blood pressure here. And now I've harped on, I've inculcated in my other YouTube clips and my PDFs, especially high risk factors, that if you get a stroke, a TIA, or retinal artery occlusion. If they tell you increased blood pressure, you're going to assume that that's carotid atheromata, so where you've got systolic impulse behind the carotids causing endothelial damage. We have athero athero atheromatous development, plaque launching off to the brain slash eye. If they mention normal or low normal blood pressure, that that's going to be atrial fibrillation until proven other otherwise. We have a left atrial mural thrombus that's launched off. Now, if you have a carotid plaque, the first thing you're going to do it's carotid duplex ultrasound. I'll talk about how there's no mention of blood pressure here in a second. But if you have a carotid plaque, the first thing you're going to do, carotid duplex ultrasound. If you have greater than 70% occlusion symptomatic, which means stroke TIA retinal artery occlusion as applies in this case, or greater than 80% 80 asymptomatic, carotid brewery is a sign, it's not a symptom, then you're going to do carotid endarterectomy. If you're under those thresholds, don't worry. You have somebody's not going to make it borderline. They'll say 50%, 30%. You're going to do a triad of antiplatelet therapy. Aspirin is sufficient as per my observation. There are other regimens, but they just like aspirin straight up. Uh, number two, statin. Number three, ACE inhibitor or ARB, but lisinopril they're obsessed with. So that's how you manage carotid uh, athero atherosclerosis. Okay, If you think it's carotid stenosis, where, as I just said, stroke TIA retinal artery occlusion, where they mention elevated blood pressure. And then if they give you normal, if they tell you the blood pressure is normal or low normal, then you're going to assume atrial fibrillation where you're going to do an ECG first followed by a 24-hour Holter monitor, aka 24-hour ECG monitor. And then once you pick up the AF, you're going to do an echocardiography to visualize left atrial mural thrombus. And then in terms of the management of that, you just need to go by CHAD score. So that's there's CHADS VASC, there's different variations, but CHADS 2 is sufficient for USMLA. So congestive heart failure, one point, hypertension, one point, age 75 or greater, one point, diabetes, one point, stroke TIA or other embolic phenomena, such as acute limb ischemia, two points. If you have zero or one points total in the patient, aspirin, two or more points, warfarin. I've never seen USMLA give a fuck about not the notion of non-valvular AF, giving fun to paranox, et cetera. They tend to be old school, just give... Uh, warfarin. So that's, of course, for the blood thinning. And then you've got, you're going to give metoprolol classically uh, to manage the rate control. I haven't seen them get technical about rhythm control, all that stuff, but you could be aware that flucanide, uh, a 1C sodium channel blocker, is the first drug used for uh, rhythm control in theory if the patient does not have any structural or coronary artery disease. So the reason this question is difficult is because there's no mention of the blood pressure and you say, well, wouldn't that be atrial fibrillation until proven otherwise, not carotid atherosclerosis? I agree with you. But notice carefully, based on what I just told you about uh, management algorithms, that if we think that this is AF, well, what's the first thing we're going to do? We're going to do a regular ECG, quote unquote, holy shit, just a regular electrocardiography. We're not going to do a 24-hour Holter monitor instantaneously. You're just going to do a regular ECG. And if they tell you ECG shows sinus rhythm, no abnormalities, the next best step is going to be 24-hour Holter monitor, 24-hour ECG monitor, to pick up paroxysmal AF, where the guy goes home, has dinner, switches an atrial fibrillation for half an hour, switches out of it. So that's why it's wrong in this case, because ECG is not listed. Okay? I don't know what to fucking tell you. It's on the NBME exam, this basic same one-liner here, and they want carotid duplex scan as the answer, not 24-hour ECG monitor. Now, you ask, what about carotid angiography? I've never fucking seen it as a correct answer on NBME. Okay? I mean, in theory, sure. Why, why couldn't we do it? I mean, it would give us a more accurate picture of the carotids. Never fucking seen it as a correct answer. Okay. So they just like carotid duplex ultrasound as uh, a next best step. They, that's very high yield. Now, fundoscopy, I mean, we say, why is that wrong? It's wrong on the NBME question as well. Presumably, it's just we're looking for the underlying diagnosis here. That's what's going on. Uh, although maybe yet the eyes would be uh, looked at and make sense. It's not what they want on the NBME. So if you disagree, 
as I just said, take it up at the NVMe, don't take it up in me. And then CT, the head wrong fucking answer. Non-contrast CT could be done for uh, stroke, okay, if you're looking for bleeding, uh, ischemic versus hemorrhagic. And then contrast CT of the head could be done when you're looking for ab abscesses as well as malignancy. You should know real quick tangentially that there is another, uh, there's a similar question to this one floating around where they just tell you in pretty much a one-liner, they're just like 65 year old woman has uh, random episodes of syncope. Okay, so not stroke, TIA, retinal artery occlusion, just random episodes of lightheadedness slash syncope. And uh, the answer is 24 hour ECG monitor. Okay, that's what they want. And you say, well, doesn't that kind of contradict what you just said because they don't have regular ECG as the answer. They just have 24 hour ECG monitor where crowded duplex ultrasound is the wrong answer. I agree with you, okay? Uh, this is where it gets gray area and why people don't get 290 on step two, okay? The notion of uh, have someone having syncope, that's usually gonna be from arrhythmia. And it doesn't have to necessarily be uh, paroxysmal AF, it could be other arrhythmias, but you wanna, time, you wanna see throughout the day if a patient's episodes of syncope align with a potential paroxysmal arrhythmia, where you could do an ECG in theory that moment, but the patient doesn't have syncope that moment. So you, you hook the patient up to a 24-hour ECG monitor, she goes and walks around, she gets another episode of syncope, and you say, okay, that episode of syncope uh, coincided with some sort of SVT or VT or paroxysmal AF. So that's another answer on the OSMLE. If it's paroxysmal uh, syncope, holy shit, you'll do a 24-hour Holter monitor. But in this case, if you get occasional amaurosis fugax, you're going to think cryo duplex scan until proven otherwise. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.